Hi, this is Barbara Modi and I want to talk about the most basic and probably most common sewing job, which is sewing on a button. There is an easy way to do it, there is a neat way to do it, there's a less stressful way to do it. I want to show that to you today. I want to show you how to sew on a shirt button that's come off, a coat button, which is through heavier fabric, and also, if you really don't want to hand sew, I'm going to show you how you can sew a shirt button or a plain flat button on your sewing machine. So let's get started. Okay, so what we have here is a shirt front and a shirt button. And we want to sew this button on so it will be neat on this side because sometimes you open a shirt and you can see the wrong side of the button. And we also want the button to be sewn on quite securely. So you're going to use a double thread. So thread up a sharp needle. Try not to use too large a needle because a large, like a thick needle, because that's going to leave a big hole. So I've got a fairly fine needle. I'm just doing my little knot there. I think I did a video on how to do a dressmaker's knot. It's a bit messy, but it's quite secure. But because it's messy, most knots are, when we start sewing this button, we are going to start without the button. We're going to bury the knot underneath the button. And this will keep us from having, I'm just going to cut off a little bit of that extra there, from having a kind of messy wrong side. Because sometimes when you go, it actually looks like a squish thread spider underneath. So there's the knot come to the wrong side, then we'll go back close. Now at this point, you might find as you go back and forth and sew the button that the thread gets tangled, it's knots, and there's a little trick for that, which is a dry bar of soap. So just pass your thread over the soap, and what that will do is all the little fibers that catch and tangle thread will be smoothed down. You just you've got that there. This is a button with two holes. So, and just check on the back to make sure that you're putting it, you know, fairly neatly in the holes. And you go back and forth. Not rocket science, but this is how you do it. And probably, you know, how long? I think about six passes with the double thread should make for a fairly secure buttonhole. So when you've done that, I'll do one more. Then you want to tie it off. And if you've ever had purchase buttons come off, and probably the button that you're replacing was like that. So you'll just bring the needle up, not through the holes, but underneath the button. And then when you've done that, you're going to knot that off. And how you'll do that is you'll just make a little circle, wrap it around the button, and pull that tight. You can do it again another time. Just do a circle. And then that will be a nice... See how nice that looks? Nice and secure, very small, discreet little marks on the other side. And that's how you sew a shirt button. Okay, now, so that's how you would sew a shirt button, which is a flat button with holes close to the fabric. That is not the only way to sew on a button because other fabrics require a different treatment. What I have here is a boiled wool coat very thick bound buttonholes. And for this coat, I didn't use a flat button with holes you can see. I used a button with a shank. A shank being a kind of a little post. Here's a beautiful button here. You can maybe see that a little post on the back. And what that means is a flat button is gonna pull through all those layers of fabric and make a dimple in this heavy fabric. But with a shank, that will give the button room to lift through all the layers of fabric and float so it will lie smoothly on the surface of fabric. So if your fabric is thicker, the easiest, 
way to actually put a button on or effectively is to have one with a shank, but sometimes you don't have that option. And if you're replacing a button that has uh, perhaps been on a raincoat, you might find instead that that button has a thread shank. Same idea, you're making a kind of a stock of thread to lift the button so it'll be in the surface of fabric. And you would sew it just like that button we did previously, put the knot on this side, take it through, go back and forth. But what do I have here? I have a darning needle. You can use a matchstick. You can use whatever you can uh, think of that's just got, you know, a little bit of uh, an elevation. And sew the button back and forth over and actually kind of around whatever you're using for a button elevator. And when you've done that, this makes a huge difference. You just pull that out. Same process as before. I'm going to bring to tie it up, although you'll see these quite long threads. This is kind of loose here, but that's good. We need that. Then we'll do the same process of going around to tie it up, but we'll do it multiple times. Basically wrapping those threads Of doing a buttonhole stitch around them that'll make them more secure, and you see that creates I don't know if you can see there that creates a button that basically is, is a very secure, very strong, but lifted from the surface of fabric. So, those are your two options for sewing on a button by hand, but there's one more, and that's sewing it by machine, and we're going to look at that next. Okay, so we've sewn on buttons by hand and machine. You see here that was the button sewn on by hand and here it is sewn on by machine. Very, very neat and actually quite fast. So I'm going to show you how to sew a button on by machine. It's pr very simple and there's just a couple of things to remember. The first of which you're going to need a designated foot or if you have a snap-on foot, take off your snap-off foot so you just have the shank, uh, the, the foot holder essentially, and just drop that. What I have here is actually a designated button, hole, button sewing foot, but it actually looks almost identical to a snap-on foot with a snap-on foot removed. So you need a foot, something to hold it still, and you also need to neutralize the action of the feed dogs. Feed dogs, of course, move the fabric along. Uh, a high number will mean they'll move slow. You have a big stitch. Smaller numbers, it moves a little bit. It is a, makes a lot of sense to move your stitch length to zero, which means they won't move along at all. So that is one thing you can do. And if you have the option as well to drop your feed dogs, here my feed dogs are up. I can actually drop them on my machine out of the way. That means that the feed dogs are not going to be moving my buttonhole uh, along either. Or you can also cover your feed dogs. So in terms of that, uh, in terms of neutralizing your feed dogs, you can drop them, you can cover them, and, and or... Uh, move your stitch length to zero and you should be good. So in terms of setting this up, the first thing you do, put the button down, obvious step one, put the foot so it will actually hold the button securely and you want this to be neat without a tangle on the back. So your first step is to manually just drop the needle in that up into one hole and then pull up the bobbin thread. You just tug on the top thread and the bobbin thread will come up. And so you in fact are going to end up with both threads at the top of the machine. And you'll tie them off, deal with them later, but it means the back is going to be really neat. Your next step will be, I'm going to move this around a little bit, is to check your stitch width. You want to make sure that needle is going to go back and forth exactly in the holes 
If you don't get this right, you'll shatter your button. Done that many times. And when you verify that, you just step on the presser foot, or sorry, on the uh, and you go back a couple times. That's it. Lift your presser foot. The back is very neat. You can then thread this uh, through, put a needle, uh, thread this thread through a needle and bring them both in, tie them behind the button, or you can alternately take the top threads, put them through a needle, pull it all through the back and tie off. But that's it. You can sew all the buttons in a shirt in just really a couple of minutes and they'll look very neat. So those are three different ways to sew on a button. Thank you.